Thank you, David. Um, it's really a challenge uh, to talk about this uh, in five minutes. I will do my best. Um, what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to give you a bit of a sales pitch, uh, and then I'm going to talk about some of our work in our research centre, how that maps onto ISSR, uh, and then in the, in the great tradition of um, being global and local, um, I'll show you some of the current research going on in the centre around regeneration and governance right here in Plymouth. Um, if you talk to practitioners and academics about regeneration and what it is, they will talk about housing, they will talk about business, they will talk about jobs. Um, so I thought, wouldn't it be handy um, if there was a kind of comparative case study analysis of how regeneration, sustainability projects and urban renewal more broadly are governed? And by gum, what luck, a new book has just come out, uh, which I've authored with Routledge. Um, so uh, feel free to check that out on the web. Uh, don't be put off by the hardback prices. The, uh, the softback will be out shortly. Um, some of that research captures quite well uh, the synergies between ISSR and uh, the Centre for Research in Sustainable Leadership, Governance and Policy, which is one of three Plymouth Business School research centres and a real focus uh, for the new School of Government in which I'm heading up uh, the research agenda. Uh, some more examples of that, really, the, the book and my broader research agenda, working with colleagues across the centre in, in ISSR, um, such, as, such as Tim Daly and uh, Roger Higman, who you hear from later today, uh, looks at how we govern regeneration. So who's delivering what goods? Um, who's paying for those projects? What's the role of communities? What's the role of business? Are these people working together um, in a partnership focus? You know, the last government and this government have spoken a lot about partnerships, networks, and, you know, really the research tries to unpack what's the power dynamic there? What's the role for communities? Um, to that end, myself and colleagues uh, who sit both in SLGP, and we've got a stand out there, and feel free to come and say hi and check out the webpage. We've got information about that there. But also a colleague uh, in SLGP and ISSR, Greg Bourne, will be here today. Uh, he and I have uh, recently been asked to do some work with the Department for Communities and Local Government, looking at how we build a kind of localism and big society vision for urban regeneration right here in the southwest. So we're working with colleagues uh, in Ilfracombe around how we do that, um, which is really uh, not just very interesting from the research agenda, but also very inspiring. And long may that, uh, that synergy between the two, uh, the two uh, bodies, SLGP and ISSR, continue. Uh, in terms of the big society theme, that's kind of mirrored with some of the work in SLGP around public policy, uh, around sort of greening of HRM, uh, around leadership and around international business, some of our newer groups, as well as traditional politics and international studies focus. And there'll be colleagues from those groups here today uh, who are also represented at ISSR. Um, some of the more recent research we've also done, Roger Higman and I um, did some work around environmental NGOs and the big society. Um, in the grand tradition of uh, keeping research, teaching and practice linked, we have a practitioner report which is co-authored and available here today. Uh, Roger and I also just had a paper accepted into an American journal around this and we've also just been approached to uh, contribute to a European-wide book with Polgrave, so that's really nice. Um, the research we did actually was last year, it focused on NGOs and how they perceive big society, the role of the state, disaggregation, um, would the role of NGOs begin to change? There was a lot of concerns about resourcing naturally, but also about what the definition of big society was. Um, I think that a lot of, a lot of response were asking us if, if they could tell them, which wasn't really the point of the research, but uh, it, was, it was quite interesting in any way. And that's something that, that conversation we've kept going through SLGP and through ISSR, that strong sustainability strand, as David suggests, um, will be carried forward into the new School of Government. And we're currently engaged with the work with DCLG and also colleagues from the Department of Business, Innovation and Skills. Um, we're working with think tanks, NGOs and the corporate sector as well as community groups in order to join that up. Um, the next stage of the research, um, we were talking about this only yesterday, but the next stage of the research is going to have more of a rural focus and also more of a kind of focus around the role of sport and communities. Um, not, not just uh, not focusing on the Olympics, I'm sure there'll be much commentary about that, but also looking at much more bottom-up projects and how that works in terms of uh, community regeneration and engagement. Um, just to give you an overview very briefly of SLGP, these are the new groupings. Uh, we've moved from three to six. Colleagues in each of these groupings do work with ISSR and, and sit on uh, both, uh, both groups. 
Um, so we've got a social and public policy group, politics and international studies group. There's a lot of focus in the Pol IR group around um, environmental global governance, environmental European governance. Uh, governance decision making and risk, we have a finance team there who are very engaged in sustainability. Um, we have some long and very, very drawn out debates around the role of governance and regulation and we're doing some really good work with colleagues at Exeter Business School around that at the moment. Um, Greg Bourne will be on the stands talking about his new group, um, the Sustainability and Surfing Research Group. Um, I don't think he's quite got the weather for it in the last couple of days but I'm sure that won't, let him, that won't put him off. Um, right, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.